Mo Salah is having a competition with himself for goal <laughs> of the season, isn't he? I mean, it's ridiculous. We're, we're gonna, let's have a look at how good he is. And the question for you as we look at this is, we've discussed this several weeks, is he the best player in the world he at is, the moment? He is right now. He is. Yeah, good, I'm glad you said that. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we look at Messi's goals and it's shown around the world and it's seen as no one else can do it. Well, Mo Salah can, and he's done it twice yeah. in, in recent weeks. Plus this assist. It, oh, it wasn't just... It, his all-round play was unbelievable. I mean, that's just outrageous, Don, isn't it? I mean, in terms of yeah. the vision and execution. It's, it's the weight as well. Yeah, you know, he's, yeah, he, yeah, he doesn't have to break his Because he's, he's saying to Mane, go on, this pass is that good, take it first time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the type it's of game... It's quite hard to get enough weight on that with the outside of the boot as it, well, it's isn't it? But it, it's this one, it's like, you know... It's like when you see the great pictures of Maradona when there was about seven Belgians around him in, yeah, yeah. what is it, World Cup 82 or 86, <laughs> 86 whenever it was. Yeah. And then you look at Messi and the goals that he scored and you go, these type of players are just geniuses and that, he's that in the foot, form of his life. Now, you want to be... You, Cathcart, really. I know, has gone to block with his right, but last week he scored with his right. I know, I'm, I'm being a little bit picky towards <laughs> Cathcart. He should do a little bit better. If I'm Cathcart, I'm saying to Mo Salah, can you score from there with your right foot? And I think the Man City defence will tell him, yes, he can. <laughs> the fourth probably going, of course he yes, can. Yes, he can. Uh, he's a genius, isn't he? Oh. Oh, here we go. So, you can put... Yeah, listen, you, you, can, you can decide for yourself at home which is the better goal. I... I've gone... Oh, I, I think don't Watford. Know. I think Watford. Yeah, there are more players round him at Watford, I think actually. that footwork was just ludicrous against Watford. Yes. The way he kind of rolled it forwards and rolled it sideways yeah. in one foul sweep. And it's a strength as well. He's, he's, he's got Cancelo bombed off the ball, put Bernardo Silva on his backside, then he's twisted Laporte inside out. It's the bits of strength I'm glad there. you said that. I was just watching thinking he's, he's wiry and strong, isn't he, Dean? I mean, he, 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 no, he is. He, he kept brushing Danny Rose aside yeah. at, at the weekend. And I think that's something that maybe you don't notice, but clearly he works on. And he's just absolutely at the peak of his powers at the moment. You see him when he takes that top off, he is tuned, isn't he? <laughs> you know, he's ripped. But he's not, he's not weight ripped, is he? No. You know, you see him and you go... Everything about what he's doing on and off the pitch is perfect. Sadio Mane's got 100 Premier League goals. None of them are penalties. That's pretty impressive, isn't it? I'm not saying taking penalties is easy, chaps, but to get 100 Premier League goals without having a penalty in there is pretty good. It's a well, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what I'd have got without penalties. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm glad you say that. Yeah. Yeah. Dion's on. Dion the, the, goes, can you get the next page I, yeah, on? Because yeah. he's on it. I, I can't even, you know, <laughs> contemplate what these guys have had to go through to get them sort of numbers, and, and Mane especially, and he's not going to stop any time soon as Do well. Do you feel that Firmino is responding well to the Jota challenge? I know Jota was injured, Absolutely. but, you know, Jota... So seamlessly slips into that front three, doesn't it? It does feel like Firmino sometimes is the one who misses out, but the way he played at the weekend, it'll be Chotter who's waiting his turn. But what I loved about his performance is he had everything that we have come to love about him, which is that link up play, but his goals were a combined total of about seven yards, yeah. which mm. is what you want from your striker. That, yes, yeah, of course, be involved in the build up, but if the ball's going to get flashed across the box and, and the goalkeeper's going to spill it. Yeah. You want your centre forward there, yeah, yeah. making sure that he's there gambling on anything that falls. And that's what I loved about his hat trick was it was probably one of the ugliest hat tricks you'll ever see. But, but all first time you... finishes. Uh, yeah, yeah interesting. I mean, this this Roy Keane a lot. He's always going about first time finish. But he's in there. One touch finish. Yeah. Whereas we analyse Harry Kane yeah. to death, don't we? Yeah. And Harry Kane's outside the 18 yard box. Yes. That's where Harry, and Kane, Harry Kane, he knows his numbers are going to improve when you get in there. And I love the fact that now everyone's having the debate about Liverpool need a number nine. Yeah. Well, now they've got Jota who's flying and Firmino who's flying. And take your pick which one you like. They look like, Liverpool. Know... They look like the Liverpool of the title-winning season, do they not? They do. Don made a great point, I think, just off air about Van Dijk squeezing the team up. Van Dijk's delivery. You, you forget how good that ball... He just gets it out of his feet and boom, mm, yeah. the team are up because he sprays it 70 yards. He's one of the best players yeah. in so the world So just quickly well. before we go to Chris, because this offside rule change possibly is really significant. Because of Van Dijk, they are doing what, Liverpool? They are able to do what? Well, they're squeezing the higher up the pitch because they trust himself and Matip have got the pace and the confidence to deal with any runs from centre-forward. So you immediately then get your centre-backs close to the halfway line, which then forces Trent on one side and Andy Roberts on the left side to be higher up the pitch, which then, then pushes Salah and Mane into positions where they want to be. I was watching Liverpool so many times last season and because they were so deep, because every single centre-back they had was injured and Fabinho and Henderson were playing at the back, there wasn't the same trust, and rightly so. So the average positions for Liverpool last season would have been about 25 yards deeper than where they are now. So if you think you get Sadio Mane once 
you get Salah 1v1 that he wants. Salah doesn't want to be picking the ball up on the halfway line with 50 yards to go and seven players to beat. It's not even impossible. So the Van Dyke impact has been so good in what they're doing going forward. It's incredible. So instead, Salah's picking the ball up with 20 yards to go <laughs> and seven. No, no, I had seven men to beat, but he can beat them. No, no, it's a very good I mean? point. Of course. <laughs> you know no, I mean? it's really interesting. It's, easier, yeah. it's, it, of course. it's easier doing that in the 80-yard box than on the halfway line. Of course, it's, as he's proved, like, yeah. week, two weeks in a row. Right, they were going to win anyway, Liverpool. But that middle Firmino goal, we're all going, morally, that's offside. So just talk us through why it's not given offside and why it might be given offside quite soon. Well, this is on, on the back of uh, the Mbappe goal in yes. the UEFA Nations League. And um, to the letter of the law, this is the correct decision because we know VAR checks. I mean, Mo Salah's clearly in an offside position, but he's, he's not preventing a player from playing the ball. He's not attempting to play. He's not challenging. He's not making an action. And in that reason, he is technically onside. Um, it's been well documented that Roberto Rossetti, who's the head of UEFA referees, says that a decision like that is correct. We saw the one with Mbappe I've mentioned, said, yeah, it's right. But in the spirit of the, nice. of the game, e every ex-player I've spoken to said, Chris, it can't be right. So I'm pretty sure this is something that's going to be discussed. It can't be right because the one word you didn't use was impacting. Because mm. Salah was impacting upon the play, if not the ball, because he's forcing the defender to make the clearance. Because the defender's not going to, going to let it go and go. All right, you have it, Salah, because you're offside. You'll well, be flagged. Well, Cathcart, just, Cathcart will never ever leave them. No all. pro will no. ever ever. It's in their human instinct as being yeah. a pro from when you're a young kid going at a professional level. You are never ever going to leave the ball and no. go. I leave it because Salah's offside. Because yeah. you're not sure. Of course Especially you're not. Especially with VAR. You're, you're going to be the fool that one day leaves it and takes yeah. a chance. Then they're going to put the lines up and go, yeah. who's onside? Or there's a... Your right back is way down here out of your eyesight. But, 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 you can't but, but, see also, it. Danny Rose does brilliantly because he catches him offside. He just drifts back into yeah. line with Cathcart, yeah. catches him offside and it's for nothing. We had this in 2018. Do you remember there was a, there was a yeah. game... Uh, Liverpool. Liverpool, Tottenham. Liverpool, Tottenham, yeah. At, uh, at Anfield. We talked about this for about an hour, do well, you remember? Let, well, it left me in... You know when you're watching a game yeah. in real time and you get confused and you go, yes. what's the law? What is it? Am I right? Am I wrong? What, what am I seeing? I must, be, I must be wrong. That was because it was a deliberate play by... Yes. It was Lovren, wasn't he? Lovren kicked, deliberately yeah, placed the ball, which basically placed, placed Kane ball onside. And placed Kane onside and then we got the penalty. And yeah. I think the confusion was because the ball went backwards. Everybody's thinking... Well, he's not really kicked the ball the way he should. The law doesn't care no. to that. You know, he's clearly played the ball. I mean, there's going to be a lot of talking going forward with, with that kind of thing. It was ironic, wasn't it? We had one in the Nations League and then on yeah. Saturday... Yeah. So hopefully we're going to get that tidied up. Well, it would be nice, wouldn't it? Well, it's it's about be. the spirit of the game, Mark, it is. isn't it? I mean, we'll, we'll, ta we'll, we'll give Don that one to sort out. It's another one I fixed. <laughs> <laughs> Claudio Ranieri. Well, the good thing is he's not playing Liverpool next week. Well, that was a pretty chastening start. It was, but it surprised me that he changed tactics completely and went with a back three when you've got players away on international duty that aren't there to implement it yeah. and work on it. That, that surprised me a little bit and, and, and conceded that extra man in midfield where Liverpool were always going to be really strong. So I think he actually got it wrong for his players as well as the mm. players not being good enough. And he really needs to get that um, sorted out very, very He quickly. does need to get it sorted out because... Yeah. Yeah. He's going to be under pressure. Well, look, breaking news. What? Yeah. What's <laughs> what, 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 Claudio? Weak? No, no, no. I, mean, be, no. I, 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 I was like Dino. Everything I know about Ranieri's style, Leicester, the way he had Sampdoria, who were bottom of the league, and he took them up to, I think, ninth or 10th, playing 4-4-2 or 4-4-1-1. Mm. When the teams come in, I was stunned that he went to a three. And I think... I got asked my opinion on Friday night what type of game it was going to be for Liverpool. I couldn't have got it more wrong. I thought a bit of stress, a bit of drama. Vic Ridge Road's a hard place to go. The fans are going to be on you. It might be a squeaky 1-0 or a 2-1. Yeah. I mean, the Watford players in the end, they looked petrified because it was five going on eight or nine. Oh, yeah, it was. I couldn't believe how poor they were. We've just seen Liverpool's Sadio Mane become the latest member of the Premier League's 100 club. He brought up a century of goals at Vicarage Road. But to become only the third African to do so, there he is, three behind Mo Salah, four behind the current leader in Didier Drogba. Some achievement that, John. They've been sensational. I mean, you talk about Salah and Mane, you know, even as African players, but just in terms of what they've yeah. given Liverpool in the last four or five years, and they've been sensational. And as you say, people would be surprised because of, it's all been about Salah in terms of the goals he scored. But... Mane is only three behind him. Uh, yeah, and those two were involved. Of course, it was Mane, but the assist from Mo Salah, how good was this? So he's got the most goals for Liverpool, he's got the most assists. He's just an incredible player, by far the best player in the division so far. 
this ball is just absolutely off the charts. Great awareness, the touch, the, everything about the precision, John, everything is just yeah. perfect. And we wondered how Danny Rose would cope with him and he's not been coping with him well. You know, playing as a left side centre back, as you can see, he's not strong enough, he tries to get in front instead of just staying behind him. Uh, but once he turns here, you would think he's just going to dribble because that's what he does. But the vision and the, the, the preciseness of that pass was incredible because you think he's got space in front of him, dribble, that's what you normally do. But he had to play it early, had to play through the right pace, and it was just a fan. I wouldn't say it's on a plate because he's got a lot of work to do, yeah. um, but it was a fantastic pass. For Sadio Mane, uh, Johnny on the spot in some respects, uh, the way he finished that, what, what did you think? Did he take it as early as he was hoping for? Was it a, was there a slight miskick involved there? Listen, he, he, he bobbled it in. But of course, that normally happens. If he, if, in fact, goalkeepers will save his track it cleanly, yeah. then maybe I can save it. Yeah. But he, he, he did place it. Uh, he misses a lot of chances. If you think of the chances that he gets, his conversion rate isn't great. Yeah. But he gets so many chances because of the way we play, yeah. he'll always do things Mind like you, that. Mind you, the same set of Mo Salah. Yeah, it, it is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. But if Kevin De Bruyne had played that pass, a lot of people would be, no doubt, waxing lyrical about it. But does he get the credit he deserves no. for passes like this? No, I mean, because he shoots a lot, everybody says he's selfish. I don't think he is. I mean, he gets his head up. He knows exactly where Mane is. I mean, everything about that is... It's honestly his top draw. I, just, I don't think he gets enough credit for his overall game. It's, no. That, I mean, that ball is absolutely exquisite. We talk about his goal scoring, and rightly so, but that ball there was, was yeah. top class. He's a team player. He makes the right decisions. They're trying to make this thing about he's jealous of Mane and San and his thing, but, you know, he, because Jurgen Klopp won't have that. He won't have selfish players. Yeah. As for the second goal, uh, from Roberto, uh, Roberto Firmino, uh, Watford very much their worst own enemy here? Yeah, they just made a mess of it. You know, trying to play that long diagonal again to Messina, he... He mis he mis kicks it, and, and in the end, it's just great execution, you know, from, from Liverpool there. Mane into James Milner and a tap in for Roberto Firmino. But we just see, you know, Watford, their shape was all over the place there. We see Craig Cathcart with Mane there. He Kong saying to Cathcart, the runner's coming mm. in James Milner. You, you take him, basically, trying to communicate. Yeah. Obviously, Craig can't see him, you know, and maybe he didn't hear him because of the stadium. Bit of a miscommunication. And that's what Liverpool do, one tiny little moment like that they'll punish you if you make a mistake, and that's what happened. But Watford have been their own worst enemy. When you play three at the back, and you are dominating possession, and you're four on the front foot, and you have two wing-backs getting forward, yeah. then that's fine. When you're not dominating possession, three at the back should be five at the back. Yeah. And they've, been, they've left the three centre-backs by themselves, and they haven't been able to cope. 17% possession to yeah. Watford. Yeah. Um, the first home team this season in the Premier League, not to have any kind of shot on goal yeah. in the first 45. What have you made of that 45 under Ranieri? Well, the way, that, the way they're set up in terms of we're not going to let Liverpool, we'll let them have all the possession, it doesn't matter if you've got 13% possession, as long as it's nil-nil. Mm. Yeah. And that's fine, because yeah. I've been sitting here nil-nil, 13% possession, we've been saying that's OK for them. But if you have 13% possession and you're not going to be progressive and you go one-nil down and then you go two-nil down, yeah. it's a disaster.